Hello friends, welcome to Ansarkari. I am Vikas Bhardwaj and in this video we are going to talk about Mauryan Empire. Very important development in India in this time period. It was in 4th century BC. When we say 4th century BC, that means between 400 to 300 BC, that is before Christ. This is the time period that Nand rulers or we call them Nanda rulers were there in India. When we say India, that means in North India and the epicenter would be Magadh. We have been talking about the development of Mahajanpadas and that is how Magadh emerged as a principal center or you can say a very very powerful and important kingdom having traits which will be replicated to form a big empire for example Mauryan empire. But Nandas in spite of having great army, huge money in terms of tax collection and also a big sway over large area, they were very unpopular. Any kingdom or any government cannot be popular without having people oriented policies. So it is believed that Nand rulers were corrupt and also they were not welfare in their attitude and public policies. That is why a very famous person now we can say known by the name of Vishnugupta, Chanakya or you can say Kautilya came into picture and he went on to promise himself that very soon he will create a situation by which Nanda empire would be uprooted and that is how comes into picture the establishment of Mauryan rule and the rule of Chandragupta Maurya. Chandragupta Maurya was the first ruler of Mauryan empire. He went on to consolidate Mauryan empire from Magadh towards different regions and areas and he started moving towards Punjab that is towards north and northwest. It is the same time period in which Alexander also invaded India. When the question comes up of why Alexander invaded India then he was obviously interested in the wealth and territory but then India was forming part of Achaemenid empire and the northern territories of India were forming part of that great Persian empire which forced Alexander also to come over to India and that is how invasion took place. But by 326 BC Alexander died and when we talk about formation of Mauryan empire it is 323 BC. So within three years of the formation of empire Alexander was no more. It is speculated and certain text and also Greek historians claim that there was meeting between Alexander and Chandragupta Maurya. It was in this context that number of Greek governors were left behind by Alexander to rule over different territories in North and Northwest India. And now they will be coming in direct contact and also confrontation with Chandragupta Maurya. It is in this context very famous Greek governor Seleucus Nicator came into prominence and there was a matrimonial alliance between Chandragupta Maurya and also uh, exchange of territories. It will be extending Mauryan empire towards north and northwest and thereby creation of one of the first biggest empire in India will took place. Chandragupta Maurya known for his people oriented and also his pacifist policies, he will be not conquering all the areas of India by force and in this context till South India he will be reaching but then many areas will not be part of Mauryan empire. In later part of his life after ruling for 25 years he will be giving up the kingship and he will be becoming a Jaina ascetic and he will be taking pilgrimage to down south and will come into picture son of Chandragupta Maurya that is Bindusar. Bindusar went on to expand the kingdom or you can say empire and thereby bringing large part of India under its rule. Except certain regions of South India, most of the India was forming part of Mauryan empire at this time period. One prominent region which was not part of Mauryan empire even in Bindusar's time was Kalinga because people of Kalinga were prosperous, they were having trade and commercial activities and also they were having good agriculture. 
so they were happy in themselves and they were not really looking forward to being subordinated or being part of Mauryan Empire. And as far as South India is concerned, many rulers, small rulers were ready to give tribute or you can say they were not a threat to Bindusa and thereby they were left like that. Otherwise also it will be very difficult at that part of time to control or to eliminate these uh, South Indian rulers and thereby creating a sway over that area because it requires large administrative setup which was definitely coming into picture but it will be only established when the next ruler will coming into picture. The next ruler will be the great king Ashoka or we whom we call as Ashoka the Great. Ashoka is known as a great king because of the fact that Ashoka went on to create a great administrative people oriented system. That is why whenever it comes of governance, we say what was the governance structure of Ashoka? What were the ideas he was promoting? Why we should be knowing about Ashoka when there were so many other rulers? In fact, he was not even the founder of Mauryan Empire. Ashoka went on to win number of small battles. He was a provincial governor before he became king and now he will be trying to, I should say, create war conditions with Kalinga and there will be a brutal war and killings and massacre will take place which will be resulting into great unhappiness in mind of Ashoka. It was this unhappiness and the kind of uh, destruction which took place which really created remorse in minds of Ashoka and Ashoka would be thinking that there is no point in such conquest. It is not a real conquest. The conquest must be of peace. The conquest must be of harmony. The conquest must be of unity in diversity. The conquest must be of people. Those who are powerful, they must share ideas with those who are weak. So on such lines, when Ashoka will be starting thinking about, it was, it was a new beginning for India. It was a kind of a new ideology for India. That is why we can say Ashoka was a great ruler. It was in his 12th reignal year because Ashoka ruled for say 25 years and more so it was in his 12th reignal year that he will be started issuing some proclamations or you can say some sustained and also systematic uh, appearances and also systematic policies by which he will be trying to spread the message of what actually administration wants. How should people behave? What should be the public behavior? How different communities can coexist with each other? Why certain community is not uh, more, uh, you can say, dominant and certain community is uh, less important. So all such ideas will be addressed in his edicts, which are popularly known as Ashokan edicts. Ashokan rock edicts, that's how we claim it. So Ashoka went on to proclaim and promote ideas of harmony ideas of brotherhood, ideas of coexistence. This was both for Brahmins, that is Brahmins, those who were forming part of, uh, you can say, Vedic rituals and those who were proclaiming certain ideologies. And it was also true for Sharmanas. Sharmanas, that is heterodox sects, that means Buddhist and Jaina monks and those who followed it, they will be forming part of Sharmanas. So both Brahmana and Shamana, they were given equal importance. Buddha, uh, I mean to say, Ashoka was not bringing his personal religion into picture. He was promoting those ideas which are forming part of Dhamma, that is Dharma Vijay. So, it is in this context that Ashoka will be doing lot of public works, whether it is about digging wells, canals, you know, planting trees, providing medical facilities and also providing shelters. This will be creating a kind of a system in Mauryan empire which will be a role model and a feature for rest of the generations and new empires and kingdoms to come. So Mauryan empire is the first empire of India. That is why in today's time also you can claim that India was territorially integrated for the first time on such a large scale in Mauryan times. It is true that India went on to become a great nation through its own ideas and own ideologies. So Mauryan Empire and its kings 
they were responsible for creation of a setup which will be replicated and sustained because it was the first example of a centralized empire in India. So do you think that certain key ideas which are reflected in India today could they have been part of modern empire? I am looking forward to your comments and in our next video we will be taking up some more elements of Mauryan administration. Keep on sharing, liking and subscribing our channel. Wishing you all the best for your exams. Thank you very much.